Welcome to the first episode of the new season of Top Video Game Podcast from HorribleNight.com. I'm Justin Lacey, joined by, not my namesake, but my name brother, Justin Gifford. Hey guys, Ethan, this what is, is it? for you, but it's a giant beer mug. Like, this is my head. <laughs> is it German beer? It's, uh, Well, no, it's Swedish or uh, Polish beer. It's I'm Europe, it's fine. But... <laughs> It's Europe, and it's a giant beer thing. This is for you, Ethan, so cheer. <laughs> Kicking off this show right. We don't really know what we're doing tonight. Um, but uh, we've got we've got a few uh, game topics to get to, uh, but I also haven't caught up with Gifford in the meantime. You've been watching anything? What do you, what have you been up what have you been up to besides baby planning? Uh, oh, that might to be, be completely it. honest, the, <laughs> that hasn't been too bad. I mean, we got to buy a new car, uh, which is going to be exciting. Oh, um nice. But uh, you know, I, I got I got almost every. Uh, no, we're not. Although I am gonna have to get rid of my manual, which disturbs me. <laughs> Going to a naturally aspirated engine with an automatic transmission. Oh. Yeah, all the audience. Oh. oh. Um, but you know, nursery's in good shape. Uh, we finally got all the stuff hung up and the walls and. Uh, some of the shelves used to be beside my bed. Uh, they're like the floating shelves. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of them, like the bottom cross piece is broken off about halfway back because I broke it off with the back of my head one time when I stood up too fast. <laughs> uh, so there's that. Uh, but yeah, the baby stuff's coming along. Uh, Really enjoying True Detectives. Okay, so on HBO. Yeah, let's talk about that show because I, that's Matthew McConaughey, and who else? Um, Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson. One of my favorite actors. Yeah. That is that is that is a pairing. It is. I I get. Uh, I think you get a contact high just from watching it. <laughs> uh, uh, but th- there's a bunch of reference to the Yellow King, which was an influence to. Um, uh, H.P. Lovecraft. Okay. That that's about all I know. Other than there's a there was there was an article on IO9 today about it, and I was like, "Holy huh. crap!" Okay, cool. Did not uh, of all the things to go about, Lovecraft that I wouldn't pick that show. Right, but uh, like it's a play that makes people go insane. Mm-hmm. More or less, that that actually kind of sums up the whole thing. So that. The show was already fantastic, but I saw that and I was like, "Wow, that's sort of random, but yeah. cool." It, yeah, um, because I, I honestly, when I saw advertisements for the show, I thought maybe, oh, they spent all their money on star power. The writing's going to be terrible. Like it's going to just be an average show. I keep like, I don't know. You look at, you know, the the premium shows. You look at the HBOs. You like even the AMC's. Like I keep waiting for that one show that just falls on its face, and like. They haven't done it yet. No. Because <laughs> True Detectives is like, I watched the first three episodes in a row, like, on On Demand, and I was like, oh, my God, this show is outstanding. Cool. Cool. Uh, and then I watched uh, watched Ender's Game. Uh, what you think Ender's Game? Sun- Sunday? I thought for the breadth of material in the book, they did as well as could be done without making it a three and a half hour movie. Yeah. Uh, they, and they, they retained as much emotional gravitas as they possibly could, especially the end when Ender figures out that he's killed an entire species. Mm-hmm. They could have left that out. They could have made it fluff yep. and they didn't. Um, I guess at the time so, they were considering at that at point doing a sequel uh, still, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, they're thinking about doing an Ender sequel and then also a uh, the Ender Shadow spinoff with Bean. Dude, I would love the Ender Shadow and Bean's Shadow good. of the Hegemon. Yeah. yeah, I thought Bean was good. Um, you know, the character development suffered because it was only like an yeah, hour and they, I mean, they, just, they had to sprint through it. Like when the movie started, yeah. they started with kind of a voiceover, and I was like, "Oh, they're just gonna they're gonna skip to like they're gonna just skip to battle school. They're gonna just tell everything and then get yeah. going." But no, they hit every every major story beat. It, the movie yeah. had no soul because of it and no character development, but you had to make those leaps. But like, you know they had to keep that under a two-hour movie. And it's just kind of like, this. okay, then this is this is what this has to be. This is the, this is the We did the best we could. Yeah. Um, Although Ben Kingsley's Mazer Rackham was fucking 
awesome. Yeah, that was that was, that was pretty good. He, uh, he kind of made up for so I, Harrison Ford. Yeah, well, I grumbly I, grandpa. I, I, I I have trouble speaking ill of Harrison Ford, but I understand. You know, uh, so you know, I I reread um, Ender's Game. I'm now about three quarters of the way through uh, Speaker for the Dead, then I'll read Xenocide, and I've never read um, Children of the Mind or Enter in Exile. So I bought both of those, and I'll, I'll read through those, you know, tomorrow. And I got through Speaker of the Dead. Um, I think I only got about halfway through the third one. I just kind of, I was like, where's Battle School? Xenocide's I need, a little I need Battle dense. School. I'm here for Battle School. Where's yeah. Battle School? But well, and that's I, that's I, what the shadow books are for, right? I, but I finally got to see Battle School in real life, not how I pictured it, but that was still awesome. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, to be fair, I could have done it with a three-hour movie, but yeah, me too. But I, that's that dream's never going to happen. So, this is a totally impractical drinking vessel. I like that it takes up the entire camera angle that I've got. <laughs> um, I um, binged watched House of Cards season one. Uh, how did you how did you get through the first episode when the dog gets hit because like <laughs> I heard the dog get hit and I was like I'm done I, I don't care how great this show is you kill the dog in the first five minutes <laughs> I didn't, is that a rule for me yeah I guess I I was so at that point I was just ready f- to see okay how Kevin Spacey is Kevin Spacey gonna be and uh, yeah I really I really like that show I think I've discovered I don't political political intrigue movies and shows not my favorite thing like there's just some sort of um I, I i some sort of break from reality that i can't keep up with like it's just it it seems too unrealistic sometimes that um um i don't love them but i you know i enjoy the show the character's great and we're ready for i'm going to start season two th- uh this week so megan was kind sure enough to a- wait on me when she was trying to tell me to watch it last season when it was out but i held it off sure it's a break from reality and not like oh this seems like the news or that maybe it's that (laughs) that that, that really is my problem with uh, like you know Carrie loves uh, my wife loves uh, Scandal and I'm like yeah I'll watch it and then I have it and I have it and I'm just like this just sounds like I'm listening to the news well there's that and Scandal the issue with Scandal because Megan actually binge watched that before um to prep for House of Cards season two, and she got really into it, so I watched a handful of episodes. Yeah. I don't know anything involving like a love triangle with the president. Like, I don't. I that just uh, they were. I didn't. I I could. I wouldn't I have a love triangle with this president. <laughs> right. <laughs> the Clintons, maybe. I mean, Bill's pretty sexy, but uh, yeah, I like your I like your stance though that. It does tie a little bit too close to the news, so it just makes me depressed. So, yeah, um, if I could get John Stewart's House of Cards or John Stewart's Scandal, <laughs> maybe then we're talking. Actually, not a bad mood for him to just kind of take those political movies and satirize them. So, yeah, I'm with you there. Okay, video games. Um, we we've been looking through some uh, some of the industry topics lately, and uh, here's what jumped out. Uh, so I want to start with the game stuff. Because you and I uh, got really excited about Evolve last week to the point that we had a pretty pretty humorous exchange. Actually, you want to talk about that? Uh, Okay, let's let's get the "I'm an idiot" part out of the way first. Um, So, I, I oh, I'm sitting downstairs. uh, I was waiting for something to download or whatever, and I'm waiting. And I see this thing pop up for a uh, trailer for Evolve, and I'm like, sweet. And then it pops up, and there's like a full cover of Mother by Danzig mm-hmm. playing in the background. By I'm like, this lady. is. Yeah, by some chick. Uh, I totally downloaded her EP Did of you? covers, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and Danzig's uh, Demon Sweat Live album. Um, I yeah, understand that's that gonna be on the head- That's going to be on the headphones tomorrow on the treadmill. Uh, but, uh, so I hear this and I'm like, oh my God. And then I'm watching the, the trailer, which is cool. I mean, to be completely honest, it was not like a groundbreaking trailer. It was sure. some cool animation and it was kind of funny. Um, but you know, 
when it comes down to it, they were gauntlet class characters. <laughs> yeah. I mean, futuristic, but they're still gauntlet class characters. I've never, oh, but man, I was like, that's oh. awesome. Yeah, I like that. Uh, it's yeah, cool. so I'm like, oh, this is cool. Uh, so I sent an email to you and Coop, and I'm like, hey, this, this cover music is awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, Lacey responded to me being like, hey, by the way, we, we kind of covered this last week. Um, Mr. Mr. Copy Mr. Editor. Copy Editor. <laughs> and I had, I, first off, I put my face in my hands, and then I was just like, okay, look, sometimes I copy edit these articles without actually reading them. Like, right. I don't absorb what is going on in the article. I'm just like, that comma's fine. That's a homonym error. Uh, <laughs> that sentence needs a semicolon without even absorbing it. So, and when you uh, edit in WordPress, uh, it doesn't actually bring up the video. Yeah. So I didn't even yeah. watch the video because I assume like <laughs> their copy editing is fine. And if it's not, it's not our fault. Uh, no, I totally so, yeah. understand that. I got a big kick out of that. Just being able to call you out on that. Because I, yeah, I mean, I proof everybody's articles they submit and sometimes I don't even know what they're writing about, even though I've read the whole thing. So happy yeah. to call you out on that. But <laughs> cool. <laughs> Cool new multiplayer did, I, game coming out this fall. Th- this was my reaction when I got that email from you, though. It was like in my phone, and I was just like. <laughs> anyway, yes, multiplayer coming out in the fall. Uh, in, uh, from Pax Ten game. Plus yeah, I think it's sort of known as that. Yeah, so this Valve is Valve somehow. No, it's so it's. I the, assume if it's Left for Dead, no. It's not Valve anymore. It's a team. The team broke off from Valve. This is the team that created okay. Left for Dead. Um, Turtle Rock Studios, and they're working with 2K on this. So 2K is publishing it. Um, and yeah, like anybody that I talked a little bit about it on the show last week, but it brings back giant Citizen Caputo um, memories for me. Just multiplayer group of got a group of smaller smaller people trying to take on a giant enemy, and uh, um, it just uh, I don't know. I, I'm getting more into the cooperative, like smaller scale multiplayer experiences lately and uh we'll talk about titanfall in a bit but just kind of juxtaposed next to that like this this is more up my alley we've been coop and i've been heavy into warframe lately and uh planet side 2 and the way we play planet side 2 is we do more small squad based stuff so um i don't know the 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 appeal of playing four versus one playing uh basically you know, these class-based group of soldiers, which have some wonderful stereotypes. I did say, I don't know if you need, you know, the cowboy and the bearded redneck. Like, I feel like you could have covered, you could have covered that, you could have cast a wider swath and had a, a different fourth character, but still. Dude, magnificent the beard, and, magnificent. the dwarf mustache. and the archer. <laughs> and, um, so I like the, I like the characters, and then, um, the, just the promise of the um, it's not the behemoth what they call him they called him the uh, I forget the name of the beast anyway um, giant your giant alien creature that is just off in the distance eating carcasses collecting items and evolving to become just this super powered beast uh, that the these four have to take down and the fact that it's like it's controlled by another human it's going to make make those multiplayer sessions uh, really different every time you play. Lots of promise. Well, and I think that's the, the reason that I got so much uh, uh, mileage out of the Mass Effect 3 multiplayer, which anytime I feel like I'm going to play multiplayer with, like co- cooperatively, I will go back and play that. Mm-hmm. Because I like that the Horde mode style game, which I... I kind of get the feel that Evolve is going to integrate a lot of that. Um, I, I enjoy that sort of, hey, we're all working for the same purpose, not um, in, in the fact not, that it's yeah, small. It's not about all about head counts or yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, 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 I don't know. I think that's why at this point Destiny is appealing to me more than Titanfall Two. Is just like I look at. The experiences I can have with a small group of friends and playing, like I still, I'm going towards that more than uh, soloing anymore. But I'd still like just the big group wars of your battlefields, your Call of Duties. 
they're fun and I totally I totally get the draw, but it's uh that's not where I'm at right now. And so Evolve just kinda jumped off the map to me as far as okay, put that down as the thing the thing this fall right beside Destiny that I'm really looking forward to and uh, so that's you know it looks really great. It's coming to next gen platforms and PC. So now we've just got to make sure everybody gets on the same uh, platform there. Yeah, that's probably not gonna happen. <laughs> well, it, 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 uh, that's not true. It'll happen with Evolve. It won't happen with Destiny. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, we'll see. I'll probably yeah. Those discussions yet to come. But uh, <laughs> s- speaking of Titanfall, I believe you got into the beta, but have not. Um, been able to jump in but i i kind of just yeah, wanted I, to uh, chat about that game like where your head's out because you're all alone I Xbox don't care. you don't care I, well i mean like my head's not anywhere like it's titanfall it's first person shooter well sort of third person first person what whatever it's a shooter uh there are giant freaking robots uh you get to blow a lot of stuff up i don't even care about the storyline i i really don't there's giant robots, and I get to kill a lot of people. Um, the, the the mech presence really does it for me. Like, yeah. You're like, mechs, and the game looks like it plays pretty well. All right, I'm in. Yeah. Um, so I pre-ordered it. I've got the the code for the beta download, but I um, actually didn't get in this weekend. I was trying to wrap up Far Cry 3, which I got for my birthday, and then, uh, or Christmas, whatever. <laughs> Whoa! Don't, yeah, which was it? My back, my my backlog's brittle. Um, but you're getting to some big hitters. We'll talk about that. Like I'm, I'm excited yeah. for what you're playing. So. so, I'm excited for Titanfall, and I probably will download it. I don't know. What is today? Tuesday. I'll probably download it this weekend. Maybe. I'm trying to get into some beta play. I think, uh, I think know, the beta's I over tomorrow. tomorrow. I think. Is it already? I think yeah. they just extended it to the 19th, but. You know, the game I mean, only like a month or so away, so... Yeah, it comes out March 11th, and it's, it'll be on my desk on March 11th at, like, 2 p.m., so... Uh, as, as long as my freaking headphones from Polk Audio are there <laughs> the same day. Because they were supposed to come out February 11th, and they're like, oh! Uh, you know, I tweeted at them, and I'm like, dude, where are my yeah, they need headphones? Yeah, the, they need to let you guys uh, have some decent headphones for that. Um, well, they're the, they're the officially licensed Microsoft ones. No. Oh. And I was like, where are they? And they're like, oh, Microsoft hasn't gotten us the adapter yet. Uh, so I will get it before Titanfall comes out, but uh, they're supposed to be there on, like, the 7th or the 8th, and I'm like, dude, seriously? <laughs> anyway, please continue. <laughs> I'm getting off topic. No, you're fine. I was just... Uh, I think I will probably end up getting Titanfall after the fact, I'll probably like it'll be one of those like I'm not super hyped for it. I got nothing against it, and but it's just not grabbing me. I think I'm gonna hopefully be wrapped up in uh, Infamous Second Son when um, right around that time. But I think and it has such a fervor around it. I think I have to I have to like, experience it for myself. But I just I don't know the parkour stuff looks awesome. Like the whole traversal stuff, and then you know battling the mechs and getting into the mechs is f- fucking awesome. But but long term, like I just, unless they, I, unless they can pull off the whole multiplayer campaign thing, you know, I, I just know from experience um, with my military shooters and that kind of thing. Like if I play multiplayer, I play it for a couple weeks and then I'm done. And uh, dropping sixty bucks right away on it, um, like I said, I'm not super stoked for it, but I can't help but be fascinated by you know the promise of the game because it, it's, it's the one they're all talking about. I think that I, I agree with you largely. Um, I, I think my focus tends to be on the game a little bit longer than yours. Mm-hmm. But that said, like I hear what you're saying. Um, I'm just sort of excited to have a tier one, um, maybe not launch window game, but like I mean, this is the this next. Is, this is supposed to be the yeah the game like. This is the gears supposed to be the gears of war for the system. Yeah. So I'm ex- I'm excited, and, and I mean the first one. Um, <laughs> so I'm excited for it, um, and maybe it won't play out, but that's what's got me worked up about this. Well, I'm excited to have. Yes, uh, I remember the first time I played Gears of War on Xbox, and, and it was, was like 360, and was like, holy that shit! That was the guys. that was the HD moment, man. That was the 
yeah. the transition. And uh, Cause, yeah. I mean, I've got I've got uh, Call of Duty Four and uh, or not Call uh, Battlefield Four and um, uh, blah, 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 Dead Rising Three. Oh. I, I have Ghosts on three hundred and sixty, but Dead Rising Three and like they're both neat, but okay. But they're launch titles. Like, like they they had their launch titleness yeah. to them. Yeah. So while on Battlefield Four, still a clusterfuck. So. And, and well, Battlefield was it's a known quantity. Like it's still, you know, the best looking and has its awesomeness to it, but this is something new and it's respawn. It's the Infinity Ward guys back back in action. That's exciting. That's good for the industry. And um it's also uh you know, I kinda talked before the show, we didn't really there were some EA art articles we could talk about, but I'm kind of excited for to see how EA handles a win. Like they they've been hurting for a while and I think they've been banking on Titanfall to uh, kind of help them out, so um, I'll be this curious. better be a freaking win. <laughs> I think I'm just saying they got a few eggs in this basket, so um, um, that'll be interesting to watch just to see how successful it, it truly is because it's got the buzz. So we'll see how it delivers, and um, it's I mean, you know, I, I think if I didn't have, I mean, granted, I bought my PlayStation Four for Infamous, but if I didn't have that, I'd be all over Titanfall. I just kind of distracted myself with a completely different experience. Yeah. So, um, I also thought it was interesting that you know originally Destiny was supposed to come out around the same time, and that 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 has been pushed back to September. Like they're gonna get they're giving Titanfall some breathing room. Kind of a smart move, but um, yeah. I'm kind of bummed that I don't get that anytime soon. So, uh, as far as Infinite in. in- Infamous Second Son. Yeah. Um, I he haven't high definition paid fingers. a whole lot of attention. He has, oh, wow. Because your finger is not high definition right now. <laughs> uh, it, do you think this is going to address some of the, the beefs that people had with Infamous 2? Because I know people I really know. enjoyed Infamous 1. It was great. Uh, and Infamous Two was sort of like more of the same. A little I think Infamous Two boring. came out too quick, too quickly. I think, uh, and because I had no interest in playing it, I loved Infamous One. But I've had such a long break in between them. That's the other half of why I'm so excited for. Um, I think it looks pretty good. I also like it when you get up on that camera for chat. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I I'm sold as an Infamous fan. I'm not going to try to sell other people, but it does look like that looks like my next gen experience too. The graphics look phenomenal. The destructible environments. That's why I'm excited and. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I'm, part of me is tempted to uh, um, like mitigate the impact of this generation games on my budget by buying a PlayStation Three and just mm-hmm. buying all these off the, all yeah. the games that nine years of a system have been like this game is great. You should buy this and buying them for nineteen dollars. Yeah, I, I mean the the first party lineup for. Uh, the PlayStation Three. There is it's a it's a pretty deep library at this point. You, I think that'd be honestly, I guess that would be my. I've been saying you know upgrade your PC, but if you don't have both consoles, I would say go get a go to get go get a cheap version of the other console now. Play those. Get caught up on those games you didn't play for a year and a half, and then jump to the next gen consoles because things will be cracking next next year. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And. You know, because I played through uh, Uncharted one and two, and that was I was like, wow, okay, I get it. Why Cole loves these? I mean, he's wrong. Mass Effect is better, but I get why he loves them. Uh, looks like our live chat's so finally st- back. If you guys have got questions or comments, I think we can read uh, read what you got going on. But um, <laughs> we got the whole crew in here now. Yeah, every, they've been watching. They're there, but Twitch chat has not been uh, <laughs> cooperating tonight. Um, let's see. Next up, we talked about Evolve. We talked about Titanfall. How about Thief? Because we connected over Twitter. Um, I haven't talked about Thief because I hardly haven't watched much because I haven't been all that interested in it. It sounded like you were hyped up for uh, hyped up a little bit and taking down a peg. I, I would not know that. I would not know. That is not exactly <laughs> accurate. Can I draw I some more questions before I actually ask you the question? Yeah, why not? <laughs> no. I mean, that's really how our stuff works. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I liked the original Thief. I did not play Death of Shadows or whatever the hell the yeah. 
sequel was. Shut but I remember face. playing the first one on PC, on PC, and being like, "This game is incredible!" And it's ahead of its you know, time. Yeah, dude. And that was shoot out those torches years ago. Which is really impressive marksmanship. I mean, the guy should be in <laughs> yeah. the Summer Olympics. Um, but then I sort of just watched the gameplay today. I think I watched the Eurogamer gameplay earlier today, and it was disappointing. Like I was like, I was expecting something really exciting. I was like, uh, yeah, it, it, like you said, I'd rather just play more Dishonored. Yeah. Like. That's what I thought when I was watching this. Like, this is like Dishonored, except you can't teleport. You know, all those am, annoying stealth things that they solved with magic? Yeah, he's not going to have those. Yeah, yeah it just... I, disappointment maybe is too strong of a word. It was kind of like... Uh, yeah, you you kind of hope for the best out of that, but I haven't heard anything great yeah. about it, so it's kind of... You know, at a certain point, you know, I kind of tear those games off of my head of, I'll wait till after it comes out and see if anybody, if it really is worth uh, having some attention. But like, I felt really bad. Like there are just some, some of these franchises, you know, I'm irrationally, irrationally tied to uh, some franchises and others. I just have no interest in. So I'm not invested in thief. I thought it's been a, it's always been a cool idea. It's been a game I'm terrible at. Um, but, um, you know, trying to just, I don't know. I'm a little bit jaded to, announcing random old IP, the new version of that, and everybody getting it, assuming it's going to make the transition well. I'm just like, I don't know, you know, with where stealth has gone between Assassin's Creed and Dishonored, and metal, where Metal Gear has gone, like, I don't I don't know where, where Thief lands and makes a fun game in 2014. Like, I feel well, like... That, none of the mechanics that I saw in the gameplay jumped out of me, because that's what made Dishonored. Like, it wasn't that it was stealth... The, I mean, the art was cool. The, mm. the sound was awesome. But what made Dishonored was, hey, we're going to introduce some new mechanics that make this game really cool. Yeah. And Thief, I'm just like, oh, you're sneaking. Like, I feel like you, I could be playing Dragon Age, Dragon's Age or Elder Scrolls or something where I'm just playing sort of a sneaky character. Mm-hmm. And, but Which you're is, banking um, on, I don't know, like, IP. did you ever go back and play Mark of, Mark of the Ninja? I've been trying to push you at that at some point. Uh, I got, I, anyway, I, like, actually, okay, you, you've never heard of this. Uh, somebody stole my Humble Bundle key. Okay. For Humble Bundle 9. How much of an asshole do you have to be to do that? I know, right? <laughs> so they found out who it was. They gave me my hum, <laughs> humble, humble key back. They this, reset it. Is this recently? I go, just got hacked, but no, no, was no, no. This was before they got hacked. <laughs> uh, I like I downloaded it, or I bought it in like September, but I didn't download it because I hadn't run the Cat Five in my house. Yeah. So then I go to download it, and the key's been claimed. So they're like, okay, and it was right as they released the the maybe the Sid Meier one. I don't remember, or maybe sure. it was Humble Ten, but whatever. So they're busy. Takes them like a week to get back to me. They're like, hey, somebody's claimed this. I'm like. Hey, this is my credit card. The the last four numbers. Here's the date. Blah blah blah. And they're like, okay, clearly you bought this. <laughs> uh, so they reset my key, and I go to Steam, and they're like, hey, somebody's already downloaded this. So they go talk to Steam, and they reset that. I mean, it was a whole thing. Anyway, Mark of the Ninja was part of Humble Bundle Nine. I have not played it yet, but I own it. So anyway, <laughs> I just feel like <laughs> sorry, you no. had no idea what. Can of worms you're opening there. Now, I was just going to say that Mark of the Ninja and Dishonored are like the two best examples of um, how to how to design and create a fun game around stealth. That um, you know there are reasons that you know Metal Gear and Splinter Cell and other stealth franchises have gone more the action direction or like l- rely more heavily on the action than the stealth. Uh, because you know, you look at Thief, like it's a great Straight concept. Straight up stealth is freaking boring. Yeah, I mean, you can only play it in small doses. Is kind of my my theory. I mean, even Hitman, that was the other one. Like people, you know, if you play Hitman on the default settings, it plays like an action game, and it's you know, you get all these retries. Yes, buried in the options, you can reset it so it plays like an old school Hitman game. But but yeah, uh, you know, uh, stealth. It's a it's a tough sell and. 
you know, when they announce the thief, you just kind of like, oh, maybe did they did they come up with something new? Is there like did they crack the code a little bit? And um, I don't know. Uh, everything I've heard about it just feels like it sounds like it's a little bit out of touch. But you know, it's also February and going to be a big release, so uh, I'll keep an eye out for it. <laughs> yeah, I mean. What else? I feel sometimes like I'm just beating something up, and I'm like, "Hey, my fingers are crossed. They did something awesome, and it's a yeah, great game." Totally, totally. I am. I love being, I love being proved wrong. Love being surprised. I mean, that's what I don't know. That's what February and March releases, aside from Titanfall, are all are all about. It's just like, <laughs> you know, aside from Titanfall. And speaking of ridiculously, what the hell? Mm-hmm. Irrational. We want to move there. Do you want to make right a, now? Do you want to make an irrational joke? I don't. I, I, I don't. Think, I think I'm the just, first thing yeah. I saw on Twitter about it, like how I found out about it, is like, well, that seems like an irrational move. I was like, I think that's a, <laughs> a little, little. too soon. Um, so and, yeah, especially because I just started playing Bioshock Infinite. Yeah. <laughs> like I just started. Like I bought it on Saturday. Yeah. And then I see this. So they made a post. It was really sad too. It was just it was just on their homepage. Like I just saw the go to irrationalgames dot com and it's just or irrational dot. I can't remember which, uh, but it's just the letter from Ken Levine. You know, the, the face. Hey, I'm shutting down my company. Hey, we're gonna no, we're gonna cut it down to the to fifteen people and go go small. And uh, well, I guess yeah, the company's he's moving on, and he's well, he's winding it down, which is like a legal operation. Like irrational games, if he meant winding down, he means that company's gone. We still owe you some DLC, so we're contractually obligated to fit that in. But as soon as that's done, we're turning the lights out. Um, well, no, I mean like winding winding down is how you actually. It's like driving a, a stake into a vampire's heart, <laughs> as far as a corporation goes. Um, since you can't execute them in Texas, if you if you kind of followed along the last couple years of the last year of like all the hype leading up to the release and if you followed any ken's interviews and just he went on and talked about you know how much time he is they have spent on this game you know these games take three five years out of his life and you know these are just big epic amazing projects just landmark games but you kind of could get the sense that he was you know tired yeah i don't know he's like i want to make more stuff in five years than just one game. And I feel like, yeah. you know, they, these bigger studios, I think Cliffy B kind of hit that with Gears of War too, uh, and how he kind of took his break that they want to try to slim down and, and get a little bit more agile. And I, I, I get where there's coming, they're coming from, but it was just, it was still just a really sad thing to read that, that, you know, this was one I mean, of those. That was like the announcement to their employees. Yeah. yeah was, which was like, damn. Yeah. I mean, do, you don't have a non-disclosure agreement for your employees. Come on, man. <laughs> I the I, although the one heartening thing I did take out of it was seeing all of these industry people from you know Konami and Raven the Soft to just random people being like, "Hey, so and so is hiring." By the way, yeah, you work for a badass company, and we're yeah, we're gonna try to help you out. And you can help us out. <laughs> your, your last game made a half a billion dollars. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure we can get you a job. I don't know. Like, uh, on the on the other hand, like, like I get I get why they kind of I, I don't want to call it going indie, but I like how they want to slim down and work, you know, on smaller, faster projects and do do things different. They've been kind of doing the same thing in the last you know fifteen, seventeen years. So um, each one yeah. bigger than the next. So I I get the slimming down part. Uh, for Ken and but a part of me was like you look at some of the bigger developers align with the bigger publishers and the way the industry has just changed uh, with you know how many how big indie games have become and just where do the triple A titles fit in budgets and uh, development time and you know this a week after they announced that hey Call of Duty is going on we're going to have three developers on three year cycles and then you know the clusterfuck that has to happen to keep releasing Assassin's Creed games each year. Like I, I still wanted that example of that big triple a developer that could kind of buck the trend and do their own thing. And, um, Bioware does their own thing, but yeah, more or less, but, but, but everything is Bioware. Like EA just would just create new studios and name them Bioware. Like it was just like, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
they were still throwing a mass well, of people. But Irrational was just like that. That was a big developer out there, kind of doing doing unique things that I kind of want to see what they do, do would do next. And I kind of, I don't know. I had this thought later. I kind of wanted them to be the, kind of the next Double Fine. Like you know how Double Fine, they've taken on all these smaller projects and and kind of keep a decent sized company together. And it would be like I kind of wanted to see Irrational go in that direction, but still, you know have enough projects to keep that team together. Um, that would be... I mean, Double Fines, they're almost a disruptive force. <laughs> I mean, they are... We talked about this the other day. Double Fine almost doesn't make games. <laughs> They've almost gone the, the Netflix and Amazon way of, you know what? Screw it. We're going to try something completely new. They, they, they're sort of games, but feel they're, like they're sort of uh... more like quick-time movies. I feel, I feel like they're... And, and not to take anything away from them. No. Like, but, man, they, they've they just been like... They're, they're way the hell off uh, on, the, you know, way past left field sure. wall, and uh, which I think is great, and I love their product, but not everybody can do that. Right, right. But as a, I, I don't know. It just kind of crossed my mind. I was like, oh, I wanted to... Like, is there a middle ground out there where you don't cut all those employees but they'll find homes it, it just it was just yeah. it was just really sad to read um oh i was gonna i was gonna say i think double fine is kind of almost like a they feel like they're a co-working space for a bunch of indie developers that all happen to like work <laughs> together you know what i mean like yes yeah, yeah. with all their their prototypes and their uh amnesia fortnights and all the random games they kind of have going on like they've got all those different teams they just happen to work together versus break off into their, you know, their five or six man shops that end up teaming up anyway. So that's a, well, and I will, I will tell you one thing which borders a little bit on blasphemy, um, regarding Bioshock infinite. Like after I read this and I was playing this evening, um, part of me was a little bit glad because although the story is still fantastic and, there are times when you just stop and see all these buildings floating off in the distance where it's like, man, that's cool. It's still Bioshock. Mm -hmm. with, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but in terms of like these people cranking out these iterations of yeah, the same like, game. I didn't want to see like that. this was this was the original Bioshock from the Xbox three sixty, which was a mind blowingly good game, except it's floating in the clouds. Like, the mechanics are the same. The, the, I, part of me was like, I get it. You want something fresh, go do it. Yeah. Because yeah. the, the, game the game is very good, but And also, it is... I hope you don't get trapped into having to make another one. Like, because, I mean, you will do great things with, with that project, but you kind of can tell, like, they have to want to do something different. So, um, you know, hopefully, I'm really curious to see what what Ken's team pops up with next. I mean, they're still working with 2K. They're going to have some money behind them, but it'll be really curious yeah. to see how his shop turns out and hopefully uh, everybody else lands safely elsewhere. Um, we're going to get out of here with uh, your, any, any game shout outs. What are you playing? What are you, what's got your attention? What's cool? What's should be fixed? I don't know. Video games. <laughs> what should be fixed? Um, I mean, like I said, I've been playing Bioshock Infinite, and it's super awesome. Um, I enjoy the fact that I got Dead Island for free because, you know, at some point I'm going to get bored and I want to crush somebody's skull with a baseball bat. Um, I, at some point, I don't know what it is, I'm going to get bored and want to play Dead Rising 3. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really gave it kind of a shot, but it just it never grabbed me. Sure. And I really liked the first one. And I like zombie games, but it just it didn't really grab me. That I, was, was, was kind of weird. Like, I kind of said that Dead Rising 3 was, if there was a launch title, like a system seller, that was the closest thing that was out there. But as great as it looked, I was just kind of like, you know what? In November 2013, right now I'm not in the mood for a zombie game. Like, nothing against that game. But it was just kind of funny. Because I'm not in the mood for a zombie game, I'm not going to buy a console. <laughs> like that was kind of yeah. uh, how that all kind of came together. So, um, you know, otherwise um, we're, we're having our little outing with pure geekery. Mm -hmm. 
uh, at the end of the month. You come roller skating. Uh, I, well, I'm going to bring my roller blades. Thank you very much. Because <laughs> uh, it's 1994. Sure. Um, but, uh, you know, Nicole was like, oh, they've got an arcade in the back of the <laughs> roller place. And I said, well, is it... Uh, they have Splatterhouse. You know, is it, is it, I said, is it... Yeah. A, does it have Splatterhouse and Strider? But more importantly, is it still hustling if uh, you tell people ahead of time you're going to take their money playing Galaga? <laughs> and she says, well, I don't think they have Galaga. And I was like, well, you can't really call it a freaking arcade if it doesn't have Galaga. <laughs> you were going to say that. That's awesome. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. I may have to like bring the 3DS with uh, Galaga on it or something because <laughs> like it's just not an arcade. There's not spring shitty out. frozen pizza and Galaga. Let's find a laptop with an emulator and we can like make our make, get a cardboard box and make our own makeshift arcade machine. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I, I mean, I, my my week really isn't complete unless I've embarrassed somebody playing Galaga. So, um I yeah, that's my it. shout out. It's for a game published in 1983. It always comes back to Galaga for you. Um, it really does. My, my shout outs to Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Started playing that again last week. That game is, that game is hilarious. <laughs> that is, it is. <laughs> so I don't know how big of a Metal Gear fan you are, but uh, did I you played get, a couple of them. Did you get Metal Gear Solid Two? Did you play with Raiden at all? Uh, PS2 yes. One? Anyway, uh, I got anyway. it. I got it when it came out on GameCube. Okay. So yes, I thought he was a bitch at the time. Um, I didn't finish the game. Raiden, yeah, I hate Raiden, and so there's no reason I should like this game except they've just, you know, turned him into a cybernetic ninja, and there's barely any any of Raiden left. So, one, he has just he has a terrible, terrible voice. It's just this gravelly, just but gravelly, gravelly oh. punk. Vo- punk kid type of voice i don't i can't do it without thinking about it but um so like i found myself i was live streaming it and just the dialogue is cheesy as hell it's metal gear as hell but raiden just happened to like i would re i would hear the line and i would just give a snarky comment like that's bullshit and he like multiple times said the exact same thing that i did and I was like, okay, now you're kind of you're kind of winning me over because you're taking this about as seriously as I am. And uh, so he's got a little Deadpool in him. Yeah, a little bit. Little, yeah, yeah. He's 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 funnier than I would have thought. And it's just like the game both simultaneously takes itself really seriously, but doesn't take itself seriously at all. And that just you know that that combined with how ridiculous the action is overpowers the fact that I feel I still don't know how to play the game. I feel like I really suck at it, but I just kind of. <laughs> You know, slice my way through it. So it's been fun. I'm I'm gonna try to stick through that and uh, uh, get that done uh, here in the next month or so. So um, that was fun. So, uh, Chad, I hope you heard the part where he said he's gonna stick with the game for close to a month. Hey, I've th- documented a few. I beat Last <laughs> of Us. I beat The Last of Us live, and I'm gonna beat the. Uh, well, we're gonna attempt if I can get it streaming anyway. I'm going to play the Last of Us uh, DLC here this week. That's only two hours long. Yeah. I can beat that, right? That's justification for PS3 purchase right there, Dude. I think. Yes. Yeah, you need, to, you need to play that game before you have a child. I'm just saying. Dude. That's not much time. Yeah, yeah it's actually... Yeah. I need. To, oh, I can help you out if you need to. You can borrow as soon as I beat yeah, this DLC. You have to borrow your PS3. This is the only reason I'm keeping the DLC, uh, the P- PS3, out of the closet, is because uh, this DLC was coming out. I'm going to box it up after that, so you can borrow it and right. take care of business. There we go. Right. Hurry up and beat your DLC. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, that's going to do it for tonight's show. Gifford, thanks for hanging out. This was fun, and uh, we'll. I think we'll come back with this show in two weeks. We'll just see how this goes. We're. Uh, yeah, we'll keep it loose man. with the top video game podcast. Keeping it loose.